What do chimps do when they retire? They smoke cigars? They play the back nine? I guess it depends. We'll find out when these chimps get a chance to kick back. What's up people, Trace here for D News, and if you are a fan of our genetic cousins, the chimpanzee, then you will also be a fan of this news. The NIH announced that they are going to retire about 400 of their laboratory research chimps. Way to go, NIH. The hundreds of newly retired chimps don't have to worry about social security, they're not gonna be paying any bills. They are gonna go on an all expense paid trip to Chimp Haven. At Chimp Haven in sunny Louisiana, they'll live like stars, enjoying the luxury and culture that only 1,000 square feet per chimp can provide. The chimps will spend their days playing in yards, forest habitats, and jungle gyms while eating fresh fruits and vegetables. The package is complete with toys, books, balls, backpacks, and Irish fiddle tunes played nightly. A prize package totaling a government savings of uh, well, we're not actually quite sure how much it's going to save the government, but currently it costs about $13,000 per chimp to keep them in captivity, so it's got to be better than that. These chimps spent their lives in laboratories of the National Institutes of Health being used as human analogs for medical research. The government has sent chimps to space, taught them how to smoke, subjected them to surgeries and injuries and illnesses, all in the name of medical science. It's not the worst thing we've done to our cousins, but it is nice when a chimp can be protected and nurtured rather than poked and prodded. I say cousins because we share 98% of our genetic material. If it weren't for that 2%, I mean, we would all be chimps or they would all be humans. The move to retire the chimps has been celebrated by many animal rights groups and it's kind of hard to look at it as a bad idea. There was a time when scientists thought that chimpanzees, because of their similarity to humans, was the best way to study what drugs and other unpleasant things would do to the human body. But more recently, we've either stopped using animal testing at all or we've expanded the menagerie. You've probably heard of lab rats and lab mice. They use those in some labs, but in other places they've started to use this little guy. This one inch vertebrate is called a zebrafish, and it's been used to test everything from stem cells to skin cancer. The NIH plan isn't in effect yet, and it doesn't retire every chimp. They're gonna keep about 50 of them around for scientific research, because there are still some things that we do need chimps for. For example, hepatitis C, which attacks the liver, causing cirrhosis and eventually liver failure, is incompatible with other species except chimpanzees. Unfortunately, we'll have to keep them around a bit longer until we can get this disease licked. Which in retrospect is kind of an odd thing to say when you're talking about infected chimps. We do all hope though that someday these hairy little guys can go out and enjoy the sunshine and just, you know, live their lives. Chimps being chimps. Sounds pretty good. You could think of chimps as heroes of the medical science community, the space science community, the movie science community, because, you know, dressing up chimps as people, <laughs> putting them in movies. <laughs> it's, it's great. I love it. Is it unethical to use any animal to study human medical science, even if the alternative is no study at all? Let us know down in the comments and subscribe to D News so that you can get all of this great stuff. I mean, videos every day of the week. This is great. And if you are a chimp in Chimp Haven watching this show, sneak me in, dude. That place sounds awesome. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll be seeing you.